Welcome to Mojo Plays. To kick off the launch of our brand new channel, check out some of our favorite videos from WatchMojo's huge library of gaming content. Then click on the link in the description below to head over to our suggest page and vote on how you would have ranked this list. It's time to take off those rose tinted glasses and be honest. Okay, let me handle this. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 video games that age badly. Oh yeah! This is happening! For this list, we're looking at games that aren't necessarily bad. Many of these see frequent enjoyment today, but over time have fallen far behind in standards of graphics, design, controls, or gameplay. Hey wait! Stop! The games we're considering for this list had to be well received at their release. So games that were broken, buggy, or just not fun to begin with do not qualify. You are completely surrounded! Surrender yourself! Number 10, Mortal Kombat. The most infamous aspect of this fighting franchise is its hyper-violent fatalities. However, some of you may remember that in the first entry, actually pulling off one of these fatalities was far more frustrating than fun. The controls are clunky and cumbersome, and the fighting system that leads up to these gory finales is far too simple, with fighters only having two or three special moves and no combos. It's also worth noting that the digitized sprites weren't even that good looking back when the game was originally released, so stretching them into HD does them no favors. Sub -Zero win. Number 9. Metroid Metroid was a huge innovator in game design, with multiple abilities to unlock and an open map to explore. But some design choices are incredibly frustrating, in hindsight. First, the game has no map, so you would either have to remember the layout perfectly or stop and plot it out on paper yourself. If you were lucky enough to have the 29th issue of Nintendo Power, that would work too. But if you didn't, you can totally forget about Google, because it's 1986 after all. Even if you're gonna try today, there's still no getting around the archaic password system. Upon death, you are given a 24 character password to enter when restarting to maintain your progress. Internal saves? <laughs> like I said, bro, it's 1986. Forget about it. Number eight, Silent Hill. This landmark survival horror game for the PlayStation 1 taught us just how scary a video game could be, but actually playing through it today is kind of a chore. There are the discouragingly ambiguous puzzles. Then there's combat, which was obviously meant to be avoided at most times, but is very clunky and imprecise. Just moving around can be difficult, and when you're on the run from some sort of monstrosity, it can often lead to death. <laughs> Lastly, there's the fog. Initially added to mask the technological limitations of the system, the series is now sort of stuck with it since it's become a staple of the franchise. Number 7, Star Fox. One of the earliest examples of 3D on home consoles and the first game by Nintendo to use polygons, Star Fox was a much hyped title. While it was novel at the time, looking back the levels are incredibly bland and the game has a slideshow frame rate. The 3D models are nothing more than colored blocks, and the game lacks the targeting reticle that would be so useful in later entries. On the whole, this feels more like a prototype for what would be much better realized in Star Fox 64, which has aged surprisingly well in comparison, especially for a 64 game. Number 6, Virtua Fighter. Bring out. The very first 3D arena fighter, this game is victim to the rapid improvement in polygonal modeling. The blocky characters are lacking in detail, and the arenas are effectively just large squares stuck in the middle of various locales. The fighting itself is really stiff and lacking the finesse that 2D fighters of the same time were already perfecting. Hey, oh. Combos are short and don't chain together, so there aren't many options besides a quick string of punches and single kicks. Thankfully, like Mortal Kombat, this series became much better with new iterations. Time over. I win. Number 5, Final Fantasy 7. <laughs> 
This one will hurt some feelings, but hey, it's not number one. While Final Fantasy VII remains one of the greatest JRPGs of all time, it's also really ugly. The out-of-battle character models are awful, blocky things with faces, which is baffling considering how the game uses much better models while you're in a battle. Pre-rendered backgrounds also have a tendency to show the game's age, and when played on a larger screen, look very, very blurry. This muddled art style is actually the result of a conflict at Squaresoft between those who wanted a newer, more realistic style and those who wanted to maintain the look of the previous six games. No wonder fans wanted remade, but which aspect do you change? Number 4. Tomb Raider Yet another early game that fails to hold up as well as its successors, Lara Croft's first adventure was decidedly low on action and high on puzzles. That's not a bad thing in and of itself, but the action that there is is so mind-numbingly easy that it's difficult to forgive. When you're approached by an enemy, Lara immediately locks on with her guns, and all you have to do is hold down the shoot button until everything dies. Mix that in with some bad camera transitions, no analog stick support, and some very spotty prompt detection, and you have a game that could have been a lot better. Thankfully, those who pick up Tomb Raider Anniversary won't see the majority of these problems. Number 3. Resident Evil That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right! Oh, the early days of voice acting. The infamous Master of Unlocking and Jill Sandwich lines have spawned countless jokes and parodies. It might be handy if you, the Master of Unlocking, take it with you. These hilariously awful performances conflict with the horror that the game is attempting to convey. This house is dangerous. There are terrible demons. Ouch! And although the tank-like controls definitely increase the tension when you're playing, they also feel really awkward and unnatural. Plus, the presence of two vastly superior remakes gives you no reason to revisit this original. Jill, no. You don't want to go back out there. Number two, Grand Theft Auto 3. Get out! Till I can't no more. As the first GTA to step away from the top-down perspective, players here felt much more connected to the mayhem they were causing. However, with this closer look came a few new problems. The most notable is how bland all the textures are. You'll spend a lot of time looking at lifeless gray roads and buildings. And as you're cruising along, you might notice that there's no map, although a physical one was included in the box. The best you'll get in-game is a mini-map showing only your immediate surroundings. I can set this baby to detonate, but I still can't use a piece with these hands. Here, this rifle shall help you pop some heads. Although Vice City certainly didn't age beautifully either, it definitely benefited from a stronger art direction. Before we unveil our most contentious top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Good. Proceed down this corridor for your next test. <laughs> Number 1. GoldenEye 007 This much-beloved shooter for the N64 has no doubt been the life of many parties, but has nostalgia clouded our vision to the numerous issues plaguing it? First, the characters are lazily animated and oddly proportioned. Next, this is a shooter that predates dual analog controls, and while it definitely controls better than, say, Turok, having to stop moving in order to aim precisely is borderline blasphemy for a multiplayer FPS. Then there's the multiplayer maps, literally copy-pasted from the single player. Organic feel my eye. These layouts make no sense, and you know it. Thanks for watching Mojo Plays. Be sure to subscribe and click on the link in the description below to check out our suggestion page and vote on what content you'd like to see us cover next.